So in the last video, I introduced the idea of an HTTP bot and explained why attackers might prefer them. And so what I thought I would do in this video is talk about uh, the actual mechanics of such bots and how, and how they actually typically work in practice. Uh, so to begin with, in the case of an HTTP bot, uh, as you might expect, it, it typically takes on a client-server type relationship. So you, you would have, a, let's say, a system here that's been compromised. Okay, and we'll mark it with an X to show that it's been compromised. And what it effectively will do is it will communicate with uh, an HTTP server, aka a web server. So you would have a web server somewhere on the internet. And this is a web server that uh, was either dedicated for malicious purposes or maybe it was an otherwise legitimate server that got co-opted. Maybe somebody was able to compromise that server or compromise some web pages on that server and then use it uh, as a CNC server. Okay, now what will happen is, is uh, once a system is infected, let's say a client gets infected with uh, some type of bot software, um, that bot is going to then register with the CNC server, and that, that registration is going to happen over the HTTP protocol because it's going to be effectively a web request, and it's going to let the server know that it's there and available uh, to do whatever the server wants. Uh, and in this case, you can either do a, a pull or a push-based method to communicate with the bot, and, and uh, you know, one, one example of something you can do, and this is maybe not the most common example, but I'll talk about some of the more common examples subsequently, is the CNC server can potentially connect through a back door on the machine opened up by the bot. So you can imagine the, the bot will, will open up a back door on the machine and, you know, by a back door, it might be something like, a, you know, I don't know, a TCP socket. Okay, a TCP socket, and then the web server, which is now nefarious, can connect to the system via this back door that was opened up. And, and maybe uh, uh, the, in this case, what's happened is, is that the, the, the bot has opened up a command window that can be accessed via the TCP socket uh, by the web server. So again, it, it's one mechanism. Uh, I think the, the more common mechanism, that, and I want to kind of maybe emphasize this one more, is that the CNC server might potentially put a file. Uh, in this case, again, it's a web server. And imagine the web server will, will place a file somewhere. And, uh, uh, this file might have commands of some sort, so let's kind of uh, draw this file out, and uh, let's call this file uh, commands.html. Uh, it'll, it'll just be a simple web page that it contains uh, commands for a, a bot-infected host to execute. Okay. Now the, the host, uh, in turn, might execute a request, and it'll be an HTTP request, and, and uh, in this case, it, it might be a, a GET request for that web page. It'll be uh, it'll be a GET request, and uh, there'll be a you know it's, in this case it's commands.html. So a GET request for commands.html, and then the commands.html will then be transmitted to the client. The client can then execute the commands in commands.html, and in this case, commands.html might contain uh, some encoding of whatever commands the bot master wants the uh, bot to carry out. Now, I, I want to make one important but I think somewhat subtle point, which is that the process of providing commands to a bot infected host, in other words, the process of doing the get and then getting back a, an actual commands file, this is really, in many ways, an isolated transaction that does not have to be persistent. Uh, in other words, the bot can go ahead, be up for a minute, get the commands and then do the bidding uh, and not maintain a persistent connection with the web server while it does it. Now, I, I want to kind of contrast that with an IRC bot. So, uh, you know, one thing, let me just kind of write this out, that web servers, if, if you do kind of an HTTP-based bot, uh, it can be non-persistent, uh, and that's important to point out. Um, you know, whereas uh, for IRC bots, they tend to be persistent. In other words, IRC bots are persistent because... Um, a single bot has to kind of maintain a persistent connection with the CNC server uh, if you're doing it over IRC, but you don't have to do the same thing over HTTP. And again, this is, you know, in, in many cases, what we're talking about here are what you typically see. It doesn't have to be the way, that, that way all the time, but it's just what you uh, will see more often than not. Okay. Now, the CNC server uh, can also get uh, uh, or for that matter, instead of having a, an actual a commands.html file, the CNC server might actually host an executable file. In other words, it could be an actual 
uh, imagine like an update file for the for the bot. So let's uh, make that blue, and this could be let's say update .exe, and maybe as part of the command, it can tell the bot why don't you grab a copy of update.exe, and then the next command will be to to fetch a copy of update.exe, uh, download it, execute it, and then maybe update itself. And so there are uh, different types of files that a CNC server uh, can provide back to a botnet or to a bot infected host via HTTP. Okay. Now, it, one other thing to make sure of and to kind of note, and this is again from the perspective of either the security researcher or really from the perspective of the, of the bot master, is that when you have an HTTP bot, uh, and actually this is really true of, of other bots as well, but I do want to point it out for HTTP, uh, there is a possibility that a, that a researcher, a security researcher, can try to poll the CNC by passing it URLs in an effort to see if it can figure out how the botnet works. I mean, so typically what's happening is, um, you know, even though there's a GET request that's happening over the network, the way this GET request uh, gets created is, is underneath, there is typically a request to get the contents at a particular URL. So let's say uh, underneath, the bot might be trying to go to, let's say, HTTP colon slash slash uh, www.botnet.evil. <laughs> Uh, and typically it'll pass a query string, so maybe there's, there's a query string for, let's say, foo.php, and the query string might contain other information. So, for example, you can pass information to the CNC server like uh, the ID of the, of the infected host, so ID equals I don't know, 1. Uh, you can also imagine passing an operating system value. Uh, you can imagine uh, passing uh, a local IP address. Okay. 1.2.3.4, and so on and so forth. And so there's a lot of parameters you can imagine communicating between the bot infected host and the CNC server. Uh, and, and these can get communicated as parameters in a query string. Okay, and, and then the, uh, the response might be specific based on the actual information that was being sent back. So for example, based on the operating system type, maybe based on the identification of that bot, you might pass back a certain set of, of commands uh, back to the, the bot infected host. Uh, that can then be carried out. Okay, so you know, I think hopefully that gives you some what of a feel for how uh, how these types of, of HTTP based bots work. And again, this is a very high level description um, meant to kind of give you a flavor. Uh, and, and in general, I, I do also want to point out the, the last, maybe more subtle point is that uh, the reason we see this, this model where the, the bot sort of initiates communication via a GET request and then kind of gets back a list of commands versus having the web server connect to the bot directly. It, it's more of a for a security issue, which is that um, if you have communication initiated from the bot infected host, then the the communication has an easier chance of making it through a firewall. So when you think about it, um, let's say this this particular bot happens to be part of a a broader uh, network. Let's say it's on an enterprise. So let's say it's it's uh, Imagine you've got an enterprise network here, and this infected host is on the enterprise network. If a firewall sees traffic going from the outside of the network into the network, it might be more suspicious of that traffic if it's sort of unsolicited. Whereas if it sees traffic that initiates or gets initiated from within the network and then works its way out and gets a response back from the outside, that type of traffic is generally considered to be uh, less nefarious or, or, or less suspicious from the perspective of an enterprise. So again, just wanted to point that out, and, and hopefully this gives you some idea of the mechanics of an HTTP bot. And, and in future videos, I'll talk about other protocols as well that bots can use. Thanks a lot.